with the author of the book Princess, Miss Jean Sasson. And I think the best way to start is some basic information about you. So, Miss Sasson, why don't you tell us a little bit about your youth? Well, I was born in a small southern town, and I grew up loving to read. I read all the books in my school library before even leaving high school. My very favorites were about different cultures from my own. I was fascinated by their traditions and customs that were so different from anything I'd ever seen. So, uh, from my understanding, your books have focused on mainly women of the Middle East, right? Now, uh, why is that? Well, like I said, I had a great curiosity to learn about other cultures, and this prompted me to look for work in a foreign country. I eventually found a job at the King Faisal Hospital and Research Center in Saudi Arabia. Though at first I accepted their culture for what it was, it became increasingly apparent to me that something needed to be done to help such oppressed women. After working there for 12 years and meeting so many interested women, I was mesmerized. I couldn't imagine writing about anything else. Right. So what types of conversations did you have with these women? Well, I befriended so many of them. They would tell me of the male dominance that they were forced to accept and the atrocities done to them that had no consequences for the men who committed them. I was a sad witness to appalling oppression against women, everyday occurrences that in most other cultures would be seen as shocking violations of human rights. That sounds awful. What, what prompted you to write this book in particular, though? Well, while at a function of the Italian embassy in 1983, I met a Saudi princess whom I referred to as Sultana. I must use this name for her in order to protect her identity, for she would suffer severe consequences if anyone were to find out that it was she who leaked information to the West. We have been friends ever since and continue to be in correspondence. She told me so much shocking information of things done to women in her country, mainly to her sisters and other female relatives in the royal family. Sultana asked me to write a story to expose the injustices women of Saudi Arabia face. In the beginning, I was extremely reluctant to tackle such deep-seated Saudi customs. However, when I saw that Saudi women's status had been lowered, not raised, when I returned from a year-long absence in 1991, I was infuriated. That visit helped to focus my mind on the realization that the story of Sultana and her sisters must be exposed, and it would take a woman who could bridge both Eastern and Western cultures to tell it. I was destined to be that person. I mean, that's incredibly brave of you. Would you mind giving our viewers a quick synopsis of your book? Uh, what is it about? Um, well, Princess is written in Sultana's voice, and it follows her from childhood into married life and adulthood. Sultana, unlike most Saudi women, is a very opinionated and outspoken person. And this often gets her into trouble, especially when she tries to denounce men's power over her. As a child, her father ignores her and her brother torments her. And as Sultana learns about the heartbreaking world that she was born into, she tells the stories of other females in the royal family, servants of her family's house, and family friends. There are numerous accounts of her sisters, servants, and her own terrible experiences. Sultana is eventually forced to marry. Yet, unlike most Saudi women, she originally finds love and happiness with her husband. But you'll have to read the book in order to discover Sultana's fate. I see. Well, it sounds like a fantastic book, and uh, there are sequels to this book, correct? Yes, it's the first of three books in the series. So, had you originally planned to write multiple books? No, I hadn't, but the book became very popular very quickly, and so many people were concerned, like I am, about these women. So, I decided to continue to tell Sultana's story of fighting against the chains, locking her into a life of submission, because I believe the people need to know. Right, well, speaking of your other books, what else have you written? My first book was The Rape of Kuwait, then the trilogy, then I wrote Esther's Child, followed by Mayada, Daughter of Iraq, and finally Love in a Torn Land. And these are all set in the Middle East, the region I am most fascinated by. So, do you believe that your books have prompted any change around the world about this pressing issue? Well, sadly, the hold that men have over society and the treatment of women is extremely difficult to loosen in the kingdom itself. My books alone cannot change the country. However, Princess certainly made a large impact in the rest of the world. It put me on the list of the 500 most influential female authors, and many people greatly admire and enjoy the books. There are a few people, however, that have attacked my books, and they wrongly believe that I am criticizing the Islam faith. I am not. I am criticizing the men who are interpreting the Sharia, the Islam law, for their own benefits, in efforts to keep women submissive and controlled. Well, I mean, I think it's great what you're doing, and do you have any last statements for us? Well, I'd just like to say that the princess and I strongly hope that men in power will ensure that change will come to the social customs within the Muslim world. As a matter of fact, it is my desire that women worldwide gain the recognition and status that they deserve. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us. It was truly a pleasure. And I mean, I wish you great success in your books and just keep writing. This is great. Oh, thank, thank you so you. much. Actually, thank you because the more we get the word out, the more change that will come to right. these women.